Dr. Ann Louise, and don't you think it's time to say goodbye to cravings, to bloating, and possible thyroid hormones? Well, I believe that you can accomplish all three of those goals if you finally put yeast to sleep. You see, yeast plays a very insidious role when it comes to weight gain. And the reason is because the fungus protein can attach to the thyroid hormone, making it unavailable. And that's why I think there is so much low thyroid in this day and age. It simply may be a manifestation of the yeast epidemic, which is still alive and well. Now, yeast is very prevalent with women particularly, but those who have been on a course of antibiotics throughout their lives, those who have taken birth control pills, or who enjoy a high carbohydrate, high sugar diet. Now, you can't really escape yeast anymore because it seems to be everywhere. It certainly is a normal constituent of your intestinal tract, but when it overgrows because it's being fed by all the sugar or by all the hormones in your diet, estrogen particularly, and when you've taken antibiotics, it can then overgrow and crowd out all those good guy or friendly bacteria. I first learned about yeast and the connection to a whole myriad of problems from Dr. Billy Crook, who in the 1980s wrote the book, The Gold Standard for Yeast. The name of his book was The Yeast Connection. And in it, he had a questionnaire which will give you an idea whether yeast, in fact, is playing an insidious role in your own life. Some of the questions that he posed are as follows. Have you taken a prolonged course of antibiotics? Do you feel sick all the time, yet the cause has never been found? Have you been bothered by recurrent prostate, so it affects men as well, vaginal or urinary tract infections? Do you have hormonal disturbances, including PMS, menstrual irregularities, and problems with your perimenopause as well as menopause? Are you unusually sensitive to all kinds of environmental contaminants? Do some foods disagree with you and trigger an inordinate amount of flatulence or gas? Does your skin itch? Does it tingle? Does it burn? Do you have unusually dry skin throughout the year? And do you have regular headaches or migraines specifically? Well, if you've answered yes to any one of these questions, it's time to start looking for the yeast in your life. Now, yeast comes to us in the form of sugar, which feeds yeast. It seems to have an insatiable appetite for sugary, high-carbohydrate type foods. And of course, if you've taken antibiotics for you know, good reason, but you've overused them, then you're going to need to supplement with a whole course, perhaps three to six months, believe it or not, of probiotics. Now, yeast has been a condition and an issue that I have devoted a lot of my books to, like Super Nutrition for Women, as well as Hot Times, which is a book about menopause. I've written many blogs about the concept of yeast and whether it's truly impacting our systems in very underlying and hidden ways, so that if you log on to AnnLouise.com, you'll become a, you'll become interested, I hope, in my Edge on Health blogs. And you'll also find that there are remedies, natural remedies that you can take that will get rid of the yeast, particularly if you've been overindulging in sweets around the holiday time or during certain celebrations, or even have been indulging in too much alcohol, which is another favorite food of the yeast among us. So in essence, it's time to put that yeast to sleep. I say, go yeast, young man, <laughs> go yeast. And I think it's also time that we recognize that the most popular topic of the 1980s, Candida albicans, has never left us. It's still very much alive and well and still a problem, an insidious hidden problem in many of us, both men and women. So this is Dr. Ann Louise saying, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your evening, and I hope that yeast will never come your way. Bye-bye and take good care of yourself.